Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I wanted to read an article that, while I believe it comes from a good place, is an article that I intensely disagree with, and I want to explain why. I believe the author had good intentions, I believe he meant well, and I believe this came from a place of positivity. In spite of that, I still very much so disagree with it, and I've gotten quite a few emails about this particular article. This is from Midrange by Ernie Smith, and the title is Make Lewis Rossman Famous. The Right to Repair Guru, already well known on YouTube, has been gaining a reputation outside of the platform lately in part because he has been a willing voice for a budding movement. Right to Repair needs him. This is a picture of me testifying at the uh, Washington State, I believe this was in Olympia, on behalf of a Right to Repair bill a year and a half ago. It says Rossman as seen in his increasingly public advocacy role. Political advocacy doesn't generally involve Cameo, the platform where celebrities offer video notes to willing to pay fans. But Lewis Rossman has proven himself willing to take experimental roads to get his right to repair message heard far and wide. Rossman, a business owner who specializes in board-level repair of laptops, reached out to Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak through the platform and got an extremely passionate message out of a platform that generally isn't known for anything of the sort. Cameo is usually what you use if you want a celebrity to say happy birthday or congratulations on your graduation. It's not something something that you use for political discourse. Uh, So it says here, Steve Wozniak speaks on right to repair. Rossman knows the power of the public voice in moving the needle, and his investment in Wozniak's cameo appearance was well considered, as it hit the international press and is likely the most high-profile individual cameo video ever filmed. Rossman himself has 1.6 million subscribers to his popular YouTube channel, and has taken part in numerous public hearings on right to repair over the last year and a half. He has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for right to repair legislation, and he hopes to raise even more. Fans that might have been drawn to Rossman by his admittedly snarky point of view, he talks a lot about politics on his channel from the position of a business owner, and technical chops, have found him to be a passionate vessel for a discussion that hasn't always had a very powerful champion, and his efforts have at times put him at legal risk, only reinforcing why his work exists in the first place. Media outlets are noticing this. Just this week, Rossman was the face of a Wall Street Journal article helmed by the excellent Joanna Stern on the challenges that consumers and repair shops face when dealing with MacBook repairs, and his media Media appearances have been increasing. And when you go to the media appearances, some of these I I actually forgot about. I never even put on YouTube, and I should have. This one here is from CNN, which I don't even remember doing. This one's from The Guardian. Uh, This one's from National Review, which I think I did cover in a video. And this is a video that I did, The Horrible Truth About Apple Products, where I went over engineering failures over a period of 10 years. What's great about Rossman is that he seemingly doesn't fit the profile of someone who would be, might be a passionate front-facing advocate. In a recent video, he admitted the strain of meeting lots of people at a conference, as he's actually an introvert. But his mixture of personality and technical skill have actually made him quite effective at the job. He knows how to speak up, and he knows a ton about his subject matter area. He's not the only person out there, by the way. Nathan Proctor of the U.S. Public Interest Research Group has been doing tons of great work on the advocacy front as well, just as one example. And at a time like this, when right-to-repair legislation is finally being taken seriously, by state and national political bodies. Having someone who can both properly explain the issues and do so in an engaging way is really important. The battle over right to repair is one that involves a competition between massive trillion-dollar companies and those that don't have anywhere close to that, because they're approaching the problem from the grassroots. So when a movement has a passionate figure that is willing to step up and tell a broad audience what's what, it needs to latch on to that. Any good movement needs a voice. Lewis Rossman is a pretty great one for right to repair. So the main statement that I disagree with in this article is where it says right to repair needs him. I think that's incorrect. What Right to Repair actually needs is you. Because what I do on this channel is nothing special. It's nothing crazy. What I do is I try to get normal, average, everyday people excited about Right to Repair. Why do I do that? Because Right to Repair doesn't need me. It needs you. If Right to Repair needed me, if I was what it needed, then it would be done right now. The reason that Right to Repair is not done is because Right to Repair needs more than me. It needs normal people. And I don't think that political movements, I don't think that philosophies, I don't think that causes need more cult of personality in 2021. I think over the past five to ten years have shown that uh, you know, it's, it, it grows tiring to deal with cults of personalities and it grows tiring to have an entire movement focused on one individual. This is a flawed way to go about it because when you associate a movement with an individual, you then associate eventually associate all of the individual flaws of that person with the movement. And all people are flawed. All people are deeply, deeply flawed. And I am no different than any of that. You also have cases where people will disagree with an individual 
And then that kind of incentivizes them to attack the individual to justify their own internal disagreement with that they have with that individual. And then that winds up maligning the movement. One instance I talked about in a recent video I did a few days ago, I did an interview with someone recently, went very, very well, had a particularly spicy comment section uh, because some people in there disagree with me on certain matters of politics. But what I found particularly interesting were people that were claiming that I don't pay my employees during the training period, which is complete bullshit, not true whatsoever. We pay better than any repair shop in a 10-mile radius that does what we do, much less during the training period. And, uh, you know, there's just a lot of stuff in there that, uh, that, that wasn't particularly true, that was kind of hurtful. But it's, I understand why it's there. If you disagree with someone, you may not like them. If you don't like someone, it's easier to ascribe a negative rumor to them as a way to justify not liking them. But the point here is, you're going to see a lot of that because I'm a very flawed individual. I don't just talk about right to repair. I talk about whatever's on my mind that day, and I don't have much of a filter when doing so. There are times where I'm going to say things that aggravate people. And if I say something that aggravates someone, and I'm associated with right to repair, that person may not like right to repair because of me. And you'll see this in r slash Apple. There are many people in the subreddit r slash Apple that disagree with right to repair, and 90% of their disagreement appears to be with the concept because they don't like the person presenting it. The person presenting it is an asshole. So even if they have a good idea, even if that good idea may benefit them, if they don't like the person presenting it, they are going to find a reason in their lizard brain to dislike the idea. This is how human beings work. If the pandemic has shown anything over the last 18 months, it's just how much the lizard brain has to do with how people react to anything and uh, how easy it is for people to dismiss everything whether good or bad that a person says or does because they because they don't like that person and i don't want that ever happening to this movement that's why it's important that i not be the head of a, of a movement particularly this one or any movement no person should be the head of any movement movement should be headed by philosophies morals ethics ideas but not people and what I go over on this channel, the way I try to get people excited or involved in it is I try to make it personal to them. And what this movement needs is not me to be famous. It needs more of the people that I've gotten involved to make it personal to everybody else who doesn't know why it's important. So what I do and what I've said in many of these videos is you're never going to see me walking up and down chanting and holding a sign. Ever. That's not what I do. What I do to try to get people involved and excited, what I do to try to get people to uh, move the needle forward with, my, with this movement is get them personally invested. So instead of saying, right to repair, right to repair, right to repair, and holding up a sign and chanting, I will show you how to fix something that the manufacturer will charge $750 to $1,100 for, and I will show you how to do it every single step on the screen. I'll show you how and why I did everything that I did. I'll show you everything on the schematic for free in the hopes that you can share in what it is that I did so that you could either A, add hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to your business in new net revenue as a result of, uh, of, of learning this, or B, if you're just an end user, maybe you'll learn how to do what I do and maybe you'll save 900 bucks. And when you save $900 because you did it yourself, you're going to remember why you saved that 900 bucks. And maybe what I say at that point may mean a little bit more to you than someone who's just chanting, you know, giving out a flyer or uh, holding up a sign. I show you exactly how and why everything that I do works the way I do in every single one of these videos. You will see that there is this, uh, this giant PowerPoint presentation that pretty much goes over how to do everything that I do, and this is released free of charge for anybody to see so that even a high school dropout or dumbass like me can learn how to do what it is that I do. That's what I do. I try to make it something that you can get personally invested in. And what, even if you don't have anything to fix... Even if it's not, you don't have the way to make money from this, or you don't have anything to fix yourself, maybe if I can make this seem fun, if I can make this seem exciting, rather than like an activist chore, come with me, hold up a sign, chant, walk back and forth, if I can actually make this seem fun, maybe you won't want the next generation to not be able to take part in that fun that you were watching all these years as I'm fixing boards and trying to figure it out as I go and, and, um, and sharing and speaking with you all. And that's what I try to do. But all of what I do is not based on me being famous. It's based on you being involved. What this movement needs, what any movement needs, is not a famous person, is not a cult of personality that everybody looks up to and idolizes because people are horribly, horribly flawed and they make horrible mistakes. And when they make those mistakes, those mistakes cannot malign an entire movement. What it needs are people who are involved. It needs people who don't believe let me subscribe to this person. He is going to make everything happen for me. What it needs is people who say, I subscribed to him and he taught me something. Let me teach what he taught me to somebody else. 
That's what it needs. It doesn't need more people telling others to subscribe to me. This movement needs more people who are going to take what I do and do more of it and spread that as far and as wide as they possibly can. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. Philosophies and ideas, not idolization of cults of personalities. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now. I don't think Clinton will. I'm pretty certain he's retired. Clinton! Clinton! Mr. Clinton! Yeah. We'll try next time. See ya.